I said, I can't go that day. So we rescheduled, and it was February the 1st. And I said, okay, and this has been three or four months ago. At least. Can you hear me, Rudy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you can't, let me know. So I had put it on my phone, and I had even texted um, Dennis again and said, am I speaking? February 1st. Yes, that's today. So that's perfect. But I hadn't heard from nobody since then. And I thought, they have forgot about me. No, we didn't. I was missing you. Hey, I was sitting in the chair and I said, no, they might have forgot about me. They might have forgot to remind me, but God didn't forget about it. That's right. Everything That's right. that has been spoken and sung today is directly about what I'm speaking on. <laughs> and it's on love. Amen. And I said, what a Jesus thing to come in here and see I've not talked to nobody. Nobody knew what I was talking about. I hadn't, hadn't even told my own husband. He asked me, what are you talking about today? And I wouldn't tell him. And he was mad that he couldn't be here. And we're not going to tell him it's on video. But I'm speaking on love today. So if you've got a pencil, or even if you don't have a pencil, I want you to, in your head, or on a piece of paper, scrap piece of paper, whatever, this is no right, no wrong, no nothing, but I'm a teacher and this is how I work. I want you to write down your definition of love. Right now. Speedy up, Rudy. Hurry up. <laughs> love. The definition of love. <clears throat> While you're doing that, I just want you to know that I am not worthy to be up here speaking. I am not versed. I am not trained. I am not well <clears throat> seated in my Bible. I have not read this Bible completely through. I'm 41. But I am trying. I am reading my Bible every day. My goal is to read my Bible through. But I'm not going to put a time frame on it because I go back and read more. But I am not worthy to be up here speaking today. But I do hope that something comes out of my mouth that will be worthy to hear. That's my prayer. All right, who wants to share? I need somebody to share. This is a work together. Come on, people. Who wants to share their definition of love? Come on, Dylan. What you got? Nothing? Unconditional. Unconditional. Okay. Caring for somebody without expectation. Caring for somebody without expectation. Jesus. Jesus. Anybody else? I got unconditional feelings for others, but most of all for God. Did you Google that? No. <laughs> <laughs> right out of your brain. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, you're going to need to follow me. This is this is deep today for me. Um, this lesson is for me. I got to thinking about that in the shower and I got tickled. I said, every time I've had to speak, everything I've spoken about is a lesson for me. And I thought, you know, if that's how preachers are, I feel sorry for them. They've got a lot of lessons to learn. Because every time I speak, this is my lesson. I don't know if anybody in here is going to need to hear this or not, but I needed to hear it. This is what Webster says. Love, a quality or feeling of strong or constant affection for and dedication to another. Attraction based on sexual desire. Warm attachment. Last one. This one was funny. A score of zero in tennis. <laughs> so, it covered all the bases in Webster about love. So, love can be all of those things. Well, I wanted to think about love because on the treadmill, I was running and I listened to Focus on the Family. Billy Graham was speaking. And he said, in order to be a Christian, you demonstrate these things. And he was talking about five qualities. And just on that one time, it was broken up. If you ever listen to that station, they'll break up the sermon and then they'll start it again the next day. Well, I was on the day of love. And Billy Graham was speaking about John. And I was reading John. And he was talking about Big John and the Little Johns. And he was talking about how Big John tells you about God and God's favor and what God did for you. And Little John tells you what you need to be doing and how you need to be worshiping. But it's all about love. It's all about living in love. So, 
Go to Genesis 1, 26. And I've got a couple of scriptures I will want you to turn to if you can. If not, I'm going to read them for you. All right. Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, Let us make human beings in our own image to be like us. <laughs> They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock and the wild animals on earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. He said, let us make human beings. God created us out of love. And he said to make us in his image. That was, that was important for me in my study of love. He created us in his own image. He breathed life into us. And a few minutes ago, somebody said, his last breath, he gave us life. Well, his first breath, he gave us life. His first breath, he gave us a choice to love or not. But you're going to see in my study that what I found is love is just not love. Love to me is all the embodiment of Christ. God is love. Jesus is love. Madonna hit it. Jesus is love. So in his first breath to humans, he breathed life into us. And if you go over to Genesis 1.27, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. He created us out of love. How do I know that? Because he breathed his own breath into us. That's deep. And then in his last breath, provides us life. Still life from love. He told Moses about love. Exodus 20. Go to Exodus 20. Exodus 20, verse 6. 